Hi, it's the Lipstick Gal. Thank you so much for watching today. Let's watch some Lisa Eldridge pink lipsticks. Lisa recently released new lipsticks this summer and as I was looking at that release information before I made a purchase, I was trying to decide, okay, here are all the new shades and which ones are similar to ones I already have. And you know what's funny is that I have all but four of her lipsticks. <laughs> I have all three formulas and there's only four of them that I'm missing. The pinks I think is the largest family. And oddly enough, I don't love pink lipstick. But I think the reason that I have so many of Lisa's pinks is because her pinks are really nuanced. They're very different from a lot of other brands of a straight up pink. And I feel like that's the sort of pink that I like to wear. I had a really hard time selecting lipsticks to go in this video. I've already done all of the reds. If you're curious, I will link it for you here in the eye and in the description box down below. But that was a little easier because I felt like almost everything that I put in there with maybe one had a little wiggle room to be kind of like a warm neutral and not really a red. But with these pinks, I was going through all of Lisa's lipsticks and some of her neutrals lean pink, some of her corals lean pink. I really had a hard time delineating what is pink and what is not. Uh, so there, there's a little bit on the fringes that's just kind of pushing the envelope as what pink might possibly be, but let's jump in. I'm going to start with a luxuriously lucent formula. This is a lightweight, glossy, a little bit shiny and balmy, but not too lip gloss shiny. It's really quite lovely. The first lipstick I have to put on for you is Rose Official. This is one that is kind of like my instant go-to anytime I need something that's easy and will go with almost anything. This is the easiest for me to wear and kind of apply mindlessly. <laughs> It's sheer, it's lightweight, um, it's not too intense, but it also brings life and color to the face. I use this as cream blush. Sometimes I'll just dab it on my cheek or pick it up on my fingers and tap it in. Super easy to wear, a very low fuss, beautiful lipstick. Here's a swatch of Rose Official. It's kind of a really easy pink shade to wear. It's the one that I feel like I can put on at a stop sign <laughs> without the mirror. I can just quickly like put it on and it's always pretty and it's always glowy and it's always comfortable. This next lipstick, I wasn't really sure where to put it. Does it go more with the berry shades? Does it go more with the neutral shades? I'm putting it in here because at times it really does pull a little pink tone, but it's a very nuanced shade. I love this. This one's called Painterly. This is one of those shades that if I'm wearing warmer tones, it can pull a little bit more brown. If I'm wearing cooler tones, it can sometimes pull a little bit more eggplant, but it's always really pretty and it makes my lips look amazing. I absolutely love this one. Here's Painterly. This next shade is a very punchy pink. This is new for 2022. This one's called Wonder Wheel. This is what it looks like on. It's a very bright, punchy shade. Here is Wonder Wheel. At times it even like leans just a little bit red, but it's very, very definitely a pink. The last luxuriously lucent lipstick I have in a pink is called Love of My Life. This was one that was released in 2019 when she came out with her Summer Pinks collection. And this is one that I have reached for on days when I want a slightly cooler leaning pink. Here is Love of My Life. This is one of those lipsticks that definitely has a really pretty easy wearability to it. This right here is Love of My Life and it is definitely a cooler toned pink than Wonder Wheel. Wonder Wheel here almost pulls a little bit corally, almost a little bit red, but these are all very definitely pink shades. I'm now moving into the velvet lipsticks. These are a matte lipstick. They are a little bit more long wearing. They're not drying. That's one of my favorite things about these. If I have perfectly moisturized lips, my lips did great all day long. That cannot be said for every other matte formula out there. The lightest one that I have is one of my most used. This one's called Velvet Petal. I think the reason that I really like this pink is that it has a neutral kind of 
earthy undertone to it. It's not just a straight up pink. There is no like really bright white base to this that makes it look a little bit fluorescent and really pop on the lips. It's not bubble gummy at all. It's very much a neutral, natural shade. This could potentially be someone's lip shade. That's I think why it looks so good on me and why I reach for it so much. So here is that velvet petal. You can see it is definitely warmer than this cooler toned pink here, but it's super easy to wear, super comfortable, and I love this one. This next shade is Velvet Muse. I definitely feel like these two here are very related in their undertones. This one's just a little bit deeper. They're not like devastatingly pink, but they definitely do have that pink lean to them. I feel like they're so easy for me to wear and Velvet Petal and this one Velvet Muse are the ones that I really reach for the most. They almost pull neutral enough that I can use them as a neutral. They have enough of that pink in there that it always brings that necessary light to my face. This one's called Velvet Beauty. I feel like this lipstick shade is probably one of the more straight up pinks. It leans just a hair cool. If we're looking at it kind of next to this, you do see that it has a little bit more of a blue base where these guys can be a little bit warmer. I feel like there is a big difference and I tend to really like wear these sorts of pinks a little bit more. Um, they're a little bit more I don't know, open for interpretation as are they really a pink? Um, but this one here is a little bit more straight up traditional pink, but is such a beautiful shade. This shade in Velvet Blush Lightly is one that was requested. A lot of people really liked the shade of Velvet Blush, but they felt like it was a little too deep for them. So they asked Lisa to create a slightly lighter version. And I find, although I love Velvet Blush, that one's next, this is the one that I tend to reach for more because it's not quite as overpowering on my fair skin. Here's Velvet Blush Lightly. It's not quite as straight up pink as Velvet Beauty, but if you're looking at them this way, this is what the swatches are looking like. It's a really gorgeous shade to wear. I really like this formula and I find that a little bit more hydrating, although still matte lipsticks are kind of my go-to for fall and winter. I mean, I wear them all year round, but this feels like the most luxurious, comforting, hydrating lipstick, although it is still matte. The last of the velvet lipsticks I have for you is Velvet Blush. Here is Velvet Blush compared to Blush Lightly. I feel like this has a little bit more of an eggplant to it. It has a little bit more depth. It has a little bit more nuance to it. I mean, they're both beautiful shades, but this one, I feel like the minute I wear it, I am just right on the edge of heading into like vampy lip territory. And I know it's because I'm fair. I really love this. I like it best when I wear it kind of like a blotted lip where I apply it and I blot most of it off, or I'll put a little bit in the center and just kind of smudge it out with my finger. It's absolutely stunning that way. But this is a really beautiful kind of almost eggplanty brown undertone when you're looking at it. And here's what it looks like compared to the rest of the pinks. So I'm just down to the Insanely Saturated. I'm going to start with the two lipsticks that originally came in Lisa's Summer Pink collection. The first one here is Rainbow Spill. To me, sometimes it reads a little bit more coral, but since she dubbed it a pink, we'll start there. Here is Rainbow Spill. This is what it looks like compared to the rest. It is a very vibrant, shocking color. It's a ton of fun to wear, but it's definitely one of those that I really let this be the one power statement on my face when I'm wearing this lipstick. I don't want it to fight too much with anything else. This is Skyscraper Rose. My lips are getting a little mad from all the lip swatching I've been doing, but I love this shade. This is one of my favorites in all of my Lisa lipsticks. Here's what Skyscraper Rose looks like compared to the rest. It's very bright, it's very punchy, it's very intense, and so much fun to wear. This last lipstick, I 
I didn't know if I should put it in because it's described as a fuchsia, but it reads very purple to me. This one's called New Wave. Isn't this just fun? It's incredible. This is what it looks like here. It is a bright, unapologetic, bold shade. I see why it's described as a fuchsia, but it almost reads a little bit purple to me, but it is so flattering on the face. I've seen it on so many different models on Lisa's website, and everybody looks fabulous in the shade, which is why I picked it up, because normally I would not be picking up what to me reads as a straight up purple lipstick. <laughs> I mean, what am I gonna do with that? But it's so much fun on. Mm, I really like this. These swatches are really, really interesting. We start here with Rose Official, Painterly, Wonder Wheel, Love of My Life, Velvet Petal, Velvet Muse, Velvet Beauty, Velvet Blush Lightly, Velvet Blush, Rainbow Spill, Skyscraper Rose, and New Wave. This is such an interesting collection of pink lipsticks to me. I, for years, did not like pink lipsticks because a lot of the pinks that I was wearing just didn't suit my skin tone. They were too pink, too bubblegum, too Barbie, and um, maybe I just don't feel confident wearing a pink lipstick. I feel like if you're not confident wearing, it could be the perfect shade for you, but if you don't feel confident wearing it, you're always gonna look a little weird and awkward. But I love that every single one of these brings out that confidence in me, but you've got a real interesting mix of undertones, some that tend to look a little bit more neutral and brown, some that tend to look a little bit more vibrant and almost even purple. This one really leans a little bit coral, as does this, but I like that we have a variety of finishes, a variety of undertones, yet they all fall into the pink category. I hope this was helpful. I really, I mean, just looking at it for me, it really helps to kind of solidify, you know, that um, Wonder Wheel and Rainbow Spill kind of are like the, you know, less intense, more intense version of each other. And I feel like Love of My Life and Skyscraper Rose kind of similar there. I feel like Painterly and Velvet Blush really have similar undertones. I feel like there's some really beautiful nuances to these lipsticks, and it depends on whether you like a sheer formula, whether you like a completely opaque and one swipe formula. One, do you like something that is like ultimately bold and is gonna scream loudly from the rooftops for you? I think whatever you're looking for, you're gonna be able to find. I know Lisa's gonna to continue to expand her range, and I am delighted by the prospect of that. I would love to know if you have a favorite lipstick from Lisa Eldridge. It doesn't have to be a pink, it could be anything. Let me know what it is. Or let's just say maybe these are not easily accessible for you, but you love pink lipstick. What's your favorite shade and who makes it? Let me know in the comment section down below. Thank you so, so much for watching today. Have an incredible day and I'll see you again soon.